So this is me closing the trunk. And this is other people closing the trunk on my car. And this is gonna solve the problem with people smashing in the uh, trunk lid. So I reached out to these guys and they were friendly enough to send it over. It's the hand show uh, power tailgate. Um, this is gonna be the DUI video of how to install it and I'm also gonna do a video uh, with a review after I've been using it for a while. But anyways, um, this is probably gonna be a long video installing everything. I'm gonna go through it all in detail. So if you wanna get on with this project, you can follow this video step by step. Um, yeah. So in this kit is basically everything you need. Um, we've got the instructions here. There's a warranty card, wiring harness, more wiring harness. This is the kick sensor or the foot sensor. This is the control unit. Got some 3M tape, soft close latch, and they even include a drill bit, which is this one, speaker, and of course these struts. So let's get this show going. Well, there's a disclaimer saying that you need to check the distance between the the glass and the bodywork and um, that's not supposed to be more than 4.5 millimeters on each side and this one is pretty even so I'm not gonna measure it because it is pretty much even all over I can see that so yeah let's get going so first thing first we need to open up and get in here um, we need to remove this one and that one take out this and remove the plastic trim here and also access um, more in here as well oh there's a ski latch here somebody say it's a hatch somebody say it's a latch I don't care I can put my ski in there but anyway that's a different story we're also gonna take down the rear seats um, Maybe we need to take off the bumper. <sighs> yeah. We don't have that latch here. Some people have this service uh, latch where they can access in here. I think the ones made after the tow bar came, they can open up here and just um, uh, fit it in here. But we need to take off the whole bumper. But it's not that big of a deal. You think it is a bigger job than it is, but let's get going. Alright, so we need to start with taking this one off. And to do that, the easiest, use a pry tool. Uh, there's a bunch of clips around the whole thing. And it's quite easy to take off. You're just going to hear a lot of snapping sounds and it's not breaking anything, it's just uh, the clips. When you're taking that off, you will probably see a lot of these clips that are still sitting here in the trunk here. And you can see their location where they're supposed to sit here. I like to take them off just and put them back here. And you can see where this one is supposed to be there. And just take them back because it's much easier to pop it on when those are um, sitting here. Because if not, you have to slide them in. We're just gonna take the matching. So this one is that one. Um, just use the tool like that. Take the take it out. And then you go down here, and you can see there's uh, like a slot there into the sliding. So you lock them in like that, and just continue doing that on every one 
until you're finished. So with all of them removed, uh, we can continue. And don't be afraid. These are easily replaceable if you're going to break them. You can buy a kit. They're used on many different cars. And you can buy them five six dollars uh, for a kit with a, with a lot of different ones so everything is replaceable and they don't cost much and if you're gonna start ripping panel off panels off your car you can buy this one because um, you're gonna need them some of them are really brittle and they break and some of them break beyond repair so you need to replace them but again it's replaceable okay now we're gonna take this piece off that plastic trim here and um, it's pretty easy you got one of those pin clips here and the same on the other side just use a tool or a small screwdriver pop them out the whole thing so after you taking out those two uh, pin clips uh, they lock when you put them in, they're uh, flexible. And then you push this one in, and then they lock it. So after that is taken out, you can grab your, grab hold on this plastic trim. And you can start pulling it down. And it's really not that hard to get loose. So just take that out. Then is this plastic trim. It's also pretty easy. You just grab a hole and it just comes off pretty easy. It's sealed here with that rubber. So just pull it up. take it out just pull this back after you're taking out the light and what we have here is the subwoofer I think that is on the um, with the premium interior and this is the amplifier for your stereo and, and what we have there is the uh, connection to the light outside here um, and also the nuts there which we have to remove to take out the light and on this side that's where we're gonna ground the whole thing so this is the same ground as the uh, stereo is grounded so that's the left side so we're just gonna unplug this one you just squeeze it and pull it out and then we're gonna unscrew uh, these two they're eight millimeter and they're already loose <laughs> then we need to unscrew this one it can be very hard to get off but we were lucky and that's the last bolt Okay, so now I can uh, take it out. It's only those two bolts and there's two um, rubber plastic uh, pins, guiding pins. So keep your hand on the, on the bottom of the uh, light. That's it. When you put it away, just uh, put a bolt on those nuts, put them back, back on so you don't lose them. So we take off the uh, left light, same procedure here, we unscrew this one and the two bolts on the inside. So same thing here, get it out. So wiggle it, lift on the bottom take it off same thing here 
put those nuts back. That way you don't lose anything. So now we're gonna start removing the uh, old struts. And you can see from the configuration I have the uh, the one that jumps up when you open it, but I don't close. You just need a screwdriver and if you already swapped them out, you know the procedure. And always put like um, a small towel or something to the edge of the glass here so you don't uh, accidentally break it when you try to take this out. Just wedge it in here, that screwdriver. And it comes off like that. And the same thing on the bottom, you just put it in, get that feather out. That's the uh, feather here. So then we take the uh, new strut, the electronic one, and you put it in. Make sure the clip is open and in the right position. We can lock it on. We'll do the same on the other side. Push that lock spring out. And just wiggle this one. Same on the bottom here. Have a look that the uh, clips are seated right. So lock it into place and adjust the height so it's easy for you to lock in. Okay, that being done, we need to unscrew this uh, 10 millimeter here. Uh, we're gonna take off the bumper because we're gonna install the um, the foot sensor and we take off right here there's a pin clip and right up there is a torque screw so we're gonna undo those and there's uh, some bolts under here so I'm gonna go ahead and removing those so it's a T20 uh, which is locking the plastic with the uh, fender here and when you're taking out the two 10 millimeter bolts here there's also two in the back but I don't think we're gonna uh, have to remove them so we have to see but anyways you just uh, grab a hold and you pull out this is uh, just plastic clips there's nothing scary and you can see it's loose down there as well when that's done um, you can just take the bumper and uh, pull it down and now we can access where we're going to root it and also where we're going to put the kick sensor I also did the uh, the two 10 millimeter bolts on here you just take a screwdriver and uh, take this uh, lid off there's a lot of uh, debris in there but take it off and your bumper is good to go and also put something under to support it so now we're gonna route the cables down here on each side and we're gonna put the kick sensor in and we can put the bumper back on so on the back side here uh, there's a rubber seal like this one so we route the cable going down here and behind here and then you can fish it out on the other side. Gently just feed it like that and this one will tuck away on the back side here. So after feeding uh, that wire through, uh, put it nice and snug, um, cut a hole in this uh, rubber seal and squeeze those plugs through. It's going to be a tight fit, but that's what you need. So 
this way there's not gonna be any water coming through so when you get it on you're done with this side and like uh, I showed you the wire is going on the uh, downside of this uh, rub rubber seal here and um, I heard some people are putting the wire in here but the problem being if you do that uh, you can see here there's a seal like a foam seal around the connector and that seal is tightening around here so if you put the cable through here you're gonna have an opening and there's water coming down here and that's gonna go in your car so by doing it this way we get a nice snug uh, seal here and you can see it's coming out down here so we're just gonna put that all the way down on the cable and fasten it here and we're done on this side we're gonna do the same on the other side okay so this one is rooted all the way here down here and on the underside of this um, reinforcement and under and up and it's coming in here so as the same on the other side and um, now we're gonna do the uh, kick sensor and um, a lot of you might uh, comment that you can only you can take off that piece under there there's a big black piece uh, from the axle and to the uh, rear bumper and you can mount it in there and that's correct you, you can just take that one off if you have it on a lift or a jacket up but um, uh, in order to get the cables down and into this natural place where there's two rubber seals and not do it the easy way uh, in here and getting moisture in your car you can just we have to take off the bumper anyway okay so this is uh, this is the uh, foot sensor uh, cable I was able to get that through the same rubber uh, seal grommet here because that hole is a little bit larger than on the left side so it was quite easy to, to get it through and there's a lot of space here as well and the uh, foot sensor is going to be mounted here down here and I'm gonna drill two small holes and on the other side is this thing so this is the only thing which is gonna be visible under the car you're not gonna see it but this is um, this is gonna sit under the car on that black protective uh, plastic down there so let's go ahead and drill those holes and get it all mounted just gonna clean a little bit there's a lot of uh, sand and stuff getting here Okay, so installing this one, this uh, this is up, so it's pretty basic. That's up, and the sensor is here, so we're gonna attach it this way. And as I drill the hole, I'm just gonna use the screws and put it in place. and hold the bottom piece with my other hand and then we can attach the wire I'm gonna leave some wire out just in case um, so I'm gonna tie it down here with a tie, zip tie and so if uh, Tesla ever want to work on the car, they have some slack here. OK, 
Okay. All right, so the next step is the latch, the power latch, or oh, whatever, the power controller is for the soft close module. And that's going to be installed here. So, I'm first going to remove the old one. So, that's the TX45. So, getting that one out. Alright, then we're just going to take the wires and take them all over on this side. Alright, so the button, um, the wire to the button has to come up here. And if you want to do it um, properly, you want to get it inside this tube. We need to fish it up from underneath and up here. So we're gonna take this rubber off here, and we're gonna try to fish it up here. Um, the thing is. That thing is quite big. It's like this. Would have been way easier if the whole thing was just wires and then you can just put the pins in yourself, but that's not the case. So in order to make this work at all, I'm gonna use this um, this cord used for uh, electrical wiring. Uh, to try and pass it through. So we're gonna see how that's gonna work with a little bit of uh, silicone lubing. I uh, got it through. Uh, just took it down the hole, natural place to come out. And um, I'm gonna tape this together like this, and um, hopefully get it through there. It's gonna be as easy as possible for me to get it through again and I'm also going to lube it uh, quite a bit and that rubber um, you take it through is really narrow in the end Re like really narrow it should be like I said in the beginning uh, it should be like an unpinned connector if you're bold enough to do this kind of project you're uh, smart enough to insert three pins so this is the wire going to the button which is uh, supposed to be gonna be up here so now we're gonna try to feed it through see how that will go and uh, apply some silicone just to make it easier because the wires that are going there they are not uh, insulated anyhow they're just bare wires I think it's really easy to damage the uh, original wires going through okay it's coming through Alright, so I think I'm gonna release those uh, wire strips. Okay.
finally got it through. Ah, oh, that was some piece of shit work. So my strongest recommendation of all is swap this thing with just the pins and will make it a lot easier because this was uh, not easy and no fun. At this one we have to pull it further here so we're just gonna I'm gonna try to fish it up here and then make it pass down here so the button is gonna be somewhere here so I think that's perfect everything is full of uh, lubrication and these rubber seals are I think they're pretty hard to get on when they're dry. Okay. I think that's it. Okay, so in order to get the... this is really, really hard. And um, it's really hard to film it, but uh, you can see that cable going up in that hole there. That's the um, signal cable. and. Uh, that's on top here. It's basically under there. So you need to take off this trim and that trim. Or I didn't take it off because there's some wires behind there and an airbag. So I don't want to fuck around with airbags. And uh, I just loosen it up like this and took off the two. Uh, pins here uh, and then I managed to open up enough to get to that white cable there and that's where I put that splitter uh, you split it so you connected to a new connector and the other part to a new connector so that's the split for the signal it's way down under there with some antenna plugs and stuff and it's really hard to get to but you manage just to open up here. So anyway, that was a real uh, pain in the ass, but um, let's get going. The painful process, uh, getting all that trim back, it's doable, it's done. Again, that plug back there, hard to get, but uh, it's doable. But uh, it took some time and you have to put some effort in it. So. And I also don't like uh, uh, those trims with the airbags and some wires. So I just loosen it up, like I said, and um, got this black thing uh, over the trunk to loosen up and got it plugged in. So I'm going to continue now. And sorry for not making more details about this one. Yeah, ground cable. I'm going to take it and put it with the other cables down in the well there. So it's gonna go here. And further over here. This ground that's already the ground for, uh, I think it's the stereo. Uh, so I'm gonna attach the ground to the uh, opening mechanism on that one. But first we need to do the uh, positive. So I'm gonna start feeding the uh, positive uh, power uh, through the opening to the side trim of the passenger seat and I'm gonna follow through there. So on the side trim here, on the side of the seat, that's where uh, 
tool there. Power cable through. And I'm gonna feed it down here. The wire you just take here and push it under the seat and you can feel it go under the trim. And then you continue uh, pushing it under the trim here. All through this then and you can lift it up a little bit just to push it under. Just continue forward. Then we go to the front. This one is really easy to take off, but it's not really necessary. Because you can just push it under. Under here, we have to take off that plastic up here. So, just gonna get the seat back and let's do it. Under here, there's some pin clips. We take those out when you got them out, and this whole section just drops down. You take out the light and you take out this speaker, it's for the um, warning like the autopilot going on and off or all the chimes from the car. Alright, so just continue the wire over here and I use this tool just to get this out and push the wire inside the trim here so you might just want to get it a little bit out so when you get it in the back you just Continue it all the way up. Behind the carpet, there's there's a connection here. So behind there, there's a I think it's called a grommet. We need to make a hole in that, and then we come out through the firewall. So we're just gonna drill a five millimeter hole. And on the other side, we need to lift up this one. It's no, it's really easy. We need to take this one out. It's really easy. This one has a clip here. And a clip on the other side. We can just take it out. I don't know if you can see it there, the grommet, that's where it's coming out, so just under the uh, air box. Grab it, pull it through, and here we are. And that's going over here. I'm gonna put it on the underside. On the other side of the air intake or the vent intake. Connecting this one, uh, there is. Uh, This plug uh, with uh, a circuit breaker in case something is wrong, and there's a horseshoe that we're going to connect to the battery. Um, 
first we're just gonna put this pin to pins together just squeeze it all the way in and then we'll loosen up the 10 millimeter nut here and then we we'll place this one from this side in you can already see I have another cable in on the positive and that's the I uh, uh, got a lead bar installed now we put this cover back on okay then we put on the uh, air vent again then it's this piece Put this piece back together. Remember to plug in the speaker and the light. And it's just a matter of there's two hinges which is sliding in on. You push it in, and it's all good. You take the weather strip, and you take it on top. The seat belt. Seat up. We're good to go. So now we connect the uh, ground. So that's the ground. So in the kit there's a drill bit and this is the one you use to make the hole for the button. And this is the button. So the hole is as big as this piece. There's some tape here and a fastener. Let me just tighten this one. A little bit hard to get it aligned. Okay. Okay. As I mentioned, we take um, to take all of these clips and put them back. So there's uh, it's really easy to install the whole thing. We got the control module and all the wires. Uh, this is the buzzer, which makes uh, the beeping sound if you're gonna adjust anything. So I guess it's just to wire everything up and make the wires uh, as clean as possible. 
so everything is color coded need to check this is the left one select obviously go into the left this is the right With everything uh, plugged in, we could try. There is light in the button, and I'm gonna try to push it and see what's gonna happen. So that seemed to work. I'm just gonna check if the foot sensor works. It's probably a little bit too low. Okay. So that's working too. So after all, I just um, rooted up all the wires, put them in there, and mounted everything back together, just the same way as you took it out. And there's a um, wire for the uh, lights. I uh, just uh, put it up here behind this uh, seal and um, over to this one from that one. I never turn on the light as long as your trunk is open. Uh, if you don't use them, they will just blink because they don't get the signal from the other one. So that was easy. Just put it up here behind, behind that rubber seal. And also the foot sensor is working. So overall the installation went uh, really good. There was uh, no big issues. The only issue I had was the latch had to be in the upper right uh, position, the highest level. Um, or else the hook on the uh, trunk wouldn't uh, close. Um, that was mainly it. Uh, I think um, anyone can do it. It's, it's a medium to hard installation, but it takes more time than anything. And if you have time, I used about four hours. Um, mainly because the instructions weren't that good but uh, when you figure it out and especially the um, signal wire um, which is behind the seats up there that was pretty hard to get to i think anyone can do it if they just uh, have the time to put in it so in the end it works great um, The fitment and the procedure is uh, quite easy. I mean, there's a little bit of hassle with the wiring going up that rubber uh, tube and and that one plug, but uh, that's it. Um, and if you can manage that, you can manage anything. So um, taking the bumper off, pretty easy. Ta and everything, putting it on. Um, installing things on Teslas are pretty easy because Teslas are made pretty logical. There's like Lego. Uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy this. I need to uh, use it for a while and do a review on it. But um, this is the installation video. So hopefully you can do your install faster and easier than I did by following it. And a big shout out to um, howtopart.com. They're supplying this. Um, it's a really awesome product. And I think uh, based on what I've seen before, this one is easier to install than many of the other ones where we have to tap into the canvas and everything. In the front you have to put on like one canvas wire and a power wire. And this one was way easier. So it's pr probably um, not the first version of the product. So, so the developing has really worked. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's a nice product.